Hello. Welcome to the historic John Adams Courthouse, home of the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court, the Massachusetts Appeals Court, and the Social Law Library. I'm Kimberly Budd, Chief Justice of the Supreme Judicial Court. The film you're about to see will introduce you to our beautiful courthouse. You will explore some of the pivotal moments in our court's remarkable history, which spans over three centuries. You'll also hear five former justices discuss the critical role that our appellate courts play in preserving the rule of law and protecting individual rights. And if you'd like to see our courts in action, I invite you to view oral arguments either here at the courthouse when possible or online. And now, please enjoy the film. Welcome to the John Adams Courthouse. The John Adams Courthouse stands as a symbol for the ideals of justice, enshrined in the Massachusetts Constitution, the oldest written constitution still in use in the world. Its chief architect was John Adams. It is essential to the preservation of the rights of every individual that there be an impartial interpretation of the laws and administration of justice. Opened in 1894, the John Adams Courthouse is home to the Social Law Library, one of the most venerable law libraries in the country. The building also houses the Massachusetts Appeals Court and the Supreme Judicial Court, the state's highest court. Court, all rise. The court's mission is to ensure every person equal access to a fair and unbiased resolution of disputes, free and independent of outside influence. An independent judiciary is critical to maintaining constitutional democracy. You have to have judges who can render decisions without fear of reprisals. Without an independent judiciary, a, a democracy is without the fundamental ability to enforce the rules that are established in the Constitution. John Adams believed that an independent judiciary prevented any one branch of government from exerting too much control. The judicial power ought to be distinct from both the legislative and executive branches, so that it may be a check upon both. The concept of a constitutional democracy truly has its roots right here with John Adams and the Massachusetts Constitution. A prominent attorney in 1770, John Adams made the vastly unpopular decision to defend British soldiers following the Boston Massacre. One of his beliefs was that the law must be applied fairly to everyone, even the most hated amongst us. And surely his representation of the British soldiers after the Boston Massacre was a expression of the importance of this principle. Well, this is the quartering act. The Supreme Judicial Court is dedicated to making the John Adams Courthouse a center for civic education in one outreach program, history is brought to life through interactive performances. During the play Uprising on King Street, the Boston Massacre, students assume the role of jurors in the trial of Captain Preston. Oye, oye, oye! Horrid massacre perpetrated last night on King Street by soldiers of the 29th Regiment. Today, you will decide whether or not the defendant, Captain Preston, is responsible for the killings of five men by soldiers under his command. I will ask you, Mr. Adams, to present your closing statement. Members of the jury, let us briefly review the events of the evening of March 5th. Captain Preston ordered his men not to fire. Instead, he shouted, hold your fire. Do not fire. I think Captain Preston is innocent because any of the men out of all those people could have yet fired. This verdict now declares that Captain Preston is not guilty of the murder that happened on March 5th. Court is adjourned. 
For John Adams, the Boston Massacre symbolized the dangers of mob rule. We have to worry about the tyranny of the majority, which is always something that could happen when the executive and the legislative branches of government are following the will of the people. To protect citizens, John Adams included a Declaration of Rights in our state constitution. This declaration, or Bill of Rights, concludes with the pivotal phrase, we are a government of laws and not of men. Throughout his life, John Adams was a fierce defender of the rule of law. The rule of law is a, a concept, a policy, that basically says that all of us are bound by the same laws. Just think about the image of Lady Justice. She is blindfolded. She cannot see who stands before her. She doesn't know the party's race or their age or their social status. She just renders a decision that is fair. For the courts to function as intended, people must have faith in the judicial process. One way to foster public trust is by appointing justices who reflect the diversity of the community and bring a variety of perspectives to the law. People will trust the decisions of the court if different experiences are informing the outcomes of very difficult decisions that, that the court has to decide. It wasn't until nearly three centuries after the Supreme Judicial Court's founding that the first woman was appointed to the bench in 1977. And 20 years later, the first person of color. What you're looking for is a diverse point of view in reaching the outcomes. It may be the same or it may be different. Established at the time of the Salem Witch Hysteria of 1692, the Supreme Judicial Court helped bring an end to the infamous witch trials. Since then, the court has rendered decisions on some of our nation's most divisive issues. The Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court was the very first Supreme Court to conclude that slavery was unconstitutional. It did so about 65 years before the Emancipation Proclamation. It was in 1783, in which our Supreme Judicial Court ruled all men are born free and equal. That comes from our Massachusetts Constitution. The Supreme Judicial Court has not always upheld that basic principle. We've had so many decisions over the course of our history where the courts have gone terribly wrong. In 1849, attorneys Robert Morris and Charles Sumner argued that five-year-old Sarah Roberts would receive an inferior education if she attended the all-black Abiel Smith School, which was farther from her home. In a decision penned by Chief Justice Lemuel Shaw, the Supreme Judicial Court rejected their arguments. In a very famous case called um, Roberts versus City of Boston, our Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court upheld separate but equal. The separate but equal doctrine ignored the fact that schools for black children lacked basic resources afforded to schools for most white children. Decades later, the nation followed suit. In the United States Supreme Court used the Roberts case as a basis for Plessy versus Ferguson, which was the case that stood for separate but equal. It wasn't until 1954, in Brown versus Board of Education, that the United States Supreme Court finally rejected the separate but equal doctrine. In the 1920s, Massachusetts courts became embroiled in a murder trial that captured the world's attention and is memorialized in the John Adams Courthouse as a reminder of the dangers of bias. The Sacco and Vanzetti exhibit demonstrates in a very visual way the way prejudice infected a very important trial in our history. On April 15, 1920, 
a paymaster and security guard were shot and killed during a robbery at a shoe factory in Braintree. Two Italian immigrants, Nicola Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti, were arrested for the crime and tried in Dedham Superior Court. What was on trial in that case was not really whether Sacco and Vanzetti had committed the robbery, but who they were. They were radicals. They were recent immigrants. Things that are totally irrelevant, but things that became the major features in the trial. Much of the prosecution's case focused on Sacco and Vanzetti's affiliation with anarchists. Despite the lack of evidence linking Sacco and Vanzetti directly to the crime, the men were found guilty of first-degree murder. The verdict sparked international outrage after motions for a new trial were denied and the Supreme Judicial Court upheld the decisions of the lower court, Sacco and Vanzetti were executed. The enduring legacy of the Sacco and Vanzetti case is that we must always be mindful of the risk of a wrongful conviction. We are probably the only Supreme Court in the country which has an exhibit in our courthouse which reflects what was perhaps our greatest miscarriage of justice. It is a reminder to us that we must be humble in terms of the decisions we make and must always be looking back upon the possibility that we can make mistakes and that those mistakes need to be corrected. The injustices of the Sacco and Vanzetti case serve as a stark reminder of the essential responsibilities of an appellate court. The role of an appellate court is to review decisions made by our trial courts and ensure that they are in compliance with law and also supported by fact. By the 1970s, the Supreme Judicial Court's caseload had greatly expanded. An intermediate appellate court was established to help ensure the timely administration of justice. With over 1,300 cases reviewed annually, the Massachusetts Appeals Court has become the court of last resort for most people in the state. Justices on appellate courts strive to uphold our constitutional rights. Because of the structure of our Constitution, everyone has certain rights that they can turn to the courts to look for protection. For example, in the Goodrich versus Department of Public Health case, we looked to the Constitution and concluded that would include the right to marry the person that you choose. States are finding fertile ground for protecting individual liberties, including the right to same-sex marriage, which our Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court adopted years before the United States Supreme Court for over three centuries, decisions by the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court have had a profound influence on the nation. The 21st century brings new challenges as courts resolve disputes concerning public safety and our fundamental rights to privacy and free speech. This Supreme Judicial Court makes decisions that impact every citizen in Massachusetts and sometimes the entire rest of the world. Today's court continues to rule on vital cases that shape our lives. Massachusetts is the home of the independent judiciary in America. This building in all of its splendor embodies that home and makes it real and uh, exciting, both historically speaking and looking into the future. I would like visitors to the John Adams Courthouse to leave celebrating our form of constitutional democracy. Ours is an extraordinary form of democracy. It is one of our greatest gifts to the world.